Hello and welcome to us, Group Five International Transaction. As you may all know, in order for an international transaction to be carried out successfully, efficiently, and securely, a set of trade documents is an obligatory element. Documentation in foreign trade is designed in such a way to ensure that the exporter will receive payment and the importer will receive the merchandise. Documents in foreign trade are worded, designed, and used to eliminate non-completion risk, reduce foreign exchange risk. And to finance trade transactions. In this video, we will dive into one particularly realistic example of such a set of documents, with a view to interpreting to the fullest extent all the necessary details included in each document. All of which will eventually portray the whole picture of the transaction process. Now, let us get right into it. The transaction that we are about to look into occurred between two economic entities. The buyer was TTN Foodstuff Technology Materials Company Ltd, whose head office is located in Đại Tử Sub District, Bắc Linh Đàm Urban Area, Đại Kim Ward, Hoàng Mai District, Hà Nội City. Founded in 2001, up to now, TTN is the prestigious leading supplier of food ingredients and additives in Vietnam. TTN is currently exclusively distributing food additives of Vidan Group in North Vietnam and imported product lines of prestigious global corporations in the world such as Meluni Netherlands, Corn Products USA, Ovobel India, Asahi from Japan, Roquette France, Marcel Karajinian Philippines, Fuso Japan, IDF USA, Oleofin Thailand, Plant Lipids India. Global Calcium in India. In addition to providing and distributing products, TTN also participates in consulting, supporting, and transferring technology to customer, with the desire to introduce new technical achievements that are being applied by the world in the industry. Along with the headquarters in Hanoi, TTN also expands its branch to Ho Chi Minh City and Hung Yen. On the opposite side, the seller was Gujarat Ambuja Exports Ltd in India. Gujarat Ambuja Exports Limited manufactures agro-processed products and cotton yarn. The company focuses on agro-processing activities, including the processing of oil seeds, maize, and wheat. Gujarat Ambuja Exports also produces ring spun and open-end yarn. Gujarat Ambuja Exports serves clients in India. Having been in the business for over 32 years, the company has grown to around 2,609 employees and now owns over 8 manufacturing facilities located all over India. Having recognized their compatible correlation in the production and distribution of food products, along with the fact that the AIFTA between the Asian and India has taken effect Facilitating import and export activities between Vietnamese and Indian businesses, TTN and Gujarat Ambuja became long-term trading partners, with the latter being the supplier of agro-processed food products for the former's distribution across the nation. In this video, however, we are going to examine only one typical transaction between the two companies, which was the TTN's importation of maize starch from its Indian partner carried out last year, with a quantity of 114 metric tons and worth over $51,300. This product is in solid form, storage conditions are in cool, dry place, away from direct sunlight, and are packed in 25kg HPDE bags with inner liner of LDPE without palletization. According to the product code, which is 11081200. This import order is subject to 10% VAP and enjoys a preferential import tax rate of 0% due to the decree number 159 2017 NDCP on promulgating Vietnam's special preferential import tariff for implementation of the ASEAN India Agreement on free trade in goods in the period from 2018 and 2022. This decree takes effect on January 1, 2018. 
The carrier responsible for the shipment of goods was CMA CGM, which is a French containers transportation and shipping company. It is the world's third largest container shipping company, using 257 shipping routes between 420 ports in 160 countries. The name is an acronym of its two predecessor companies. This shipping company has many years of experience in international tr sea transportation, specializing in designing and implementing intelligent solutions to take care of the cargo right across the supply chain. Now, let's have a closer look at each trade document provided to us by the TTN company and see how this transaction was carried out, shall we? First, let's go through the documents provided by TTN with a view to gathering important information before combining the whole process of the contract at the end of the video. The first document that we're going to look into is the Performer Invoice Come Sales Contract. It must include the following parameters in the Performer Invoice Come Sales Contract. The first thing to mention is the details of the parties involved, including the exporter and the importer. The exporter, there is the name of the exporter, which is the Gujarat Abuja Export LTD. The address and the contact details, including the phone number, the fax code, and the email of the exporter. And in the importer, there is the name, which is TTN Foodstuff Technology Materials Co. LTD, and the address of it, which is in Dai Tư Sub District, Buckling Dam Urban Area, Dat Kim Word, Hoang Mai District, Hanok City, along with the contact details. The second thing that they are mentioned is the description of goods and the service, including the description of the shape of the goods. Here is maize starch, including some of the statistics relating to fat, the order, the moisture, the protein content, the total ash DB, and so on, along with the expiration date, which is two years from the production rate. The next thing that they're going to mention is the prices and the payment terms. The currency used in the contract is USD, which is a strong and freely convertible currency accepted by other countries in payment transactions and frequently stable in value. And the regulation to use the price unit of USD per metric ton to calculate the price is reasonable, easy and stable. In terms of price, it is $450 per metric ton and the quantity is $900. 50 metric tons. So the total price in this document is the 427,500 USD. But later in the commercial invoice, the quantity decreased sharply to only about 114,000 metric tons, and the total amount of USD is 51,300. Although the contract was signed, in reality, the product was delivered differently because of the failing in applying tolerance or the buyer made another decision, so they changed the quantity of the product they wanted to buy. The next thing is the payment and delivery terms. For the initial email or fax presentation of documents, the buyer sends the seller a bank transfer, which is the TT method transport, for the full amount of the invoice. Following the date on which a copy of the document is presented, the seller will receive payment in a maximum of 7 to 10 working days. All bank transfer fee go to the buyer's account. Original documents won't be delivered to the buyer until the seller's bank account has. The first thing is, during the negotiation process, TTN and Ambuja discussed and reached an agreement to use the CIF in code terms 20 and 10, delivery basis items in the contracts. As far as I know, INCO terms 2020 and 2010 have no difference in the responsibility of the seller and buyer, but INCO terms 2020 allows the application of CIF in transporting goods by container and buying insurance up to type A, so businesses should apply version 2020. However, INCO terms are not rules because they are just commercial practices, so the application of INCO terms 2010 will not affect businesses. With CIF, Seller must pay the cost and freight includes insurance to bring the goods to the port of destination. However, risk is transferred to the buyer once the goods are loaded on the ship. They decided to choose CIF term because of three reasons. The first one is to higher margin in shipping profit. The second one is to have more control over the shipping process. And most importantly, 
they have trust in the buyer who is a long-term partner with the company. Let's have a further look into the payment terms which is TT. Compared with LC, the prepaid TT payment method has the faster business process. The cost of TT via bank is more economical. The buyer does not have to deposit the LC deposit. Moreover, the goods documents when paying TT is not as careful as paying LC. However, this method poses many risks to the buyer when transferring money that has not received the goods and is in a state of waiting for the exporter to deliver the goods or the risk of delayed goods. This method is most convenient in cases where the buyer and seller already has trust, long-term cooperation, mutual trust like TTN and Ambuja, which is a very concrete example. The next thing they're going to include in the Performa Invoice Come Sales Contract is the warranty information which is shown in slide and shipping documents and other conditions. The next document that we're going to talk about is the original bill of lading. The original bill of lading is issued in three copies. It comes out in a set of three. Also, it has the three copies in two deliveries to avoid lost risk as a business customer. An importer must have the original BL, not a copy, to pick up the cargo. Typically, a bill of lading will include the names and addresses of the carrier, which is CMA CGN, the shipper consigner, Gujarat Ambuja Export LTD, and the receiver, which is the consignee, TTN Foodstuff Technology, Materials Code LTD. The second thing is the place where the goods were loaded, which is the Nava Shiva port in India. The terms of shipment, shipment date, quantity, exact weight, value and flight classification. Also included is a complete description of the items including whether they are classified as hazardous, the type of packaging used, any specific instructions for the carrier and any special order tracking numbers. As we can see in the method of transportation cargo is the FCL, the marked number which is 6 times 20 feet FCL containers which means 6 20 feet full container load. Each container comes with a particular marking and seal number to facilitate the work of delivery and custom declaration, along with the details about numbers of packages stops inside, the gross weight which are tear weight of each container and the weight of the goods altogether, and the space inside the container which is 20,000 cubic meter each. The discharge location is also included in the bill of lading, which is in high form port, carried out by the CMA CGM agent in Vietnam. There is also the notion that the goods were placed on board of the vessel in June 30, 2022 by CMA CGM agencies from India. The next thing to be mentioned is the commercial invoice. This document is supplied by the shipper providing information about the shipment, including a description of goods the value of the goods and the shipper information. A commercial invoice is a part of export and import documentation and may be used by customs authorities to assess applicable taxes and duties. Having a look at the commercial invoice, the information deduced can be divided into three categories. The first category is the information related to the transaction, including the invoice number, which is 222-3300-354. This number also appears on the payment demand note as well as the packing list. Next, we have the invoice date, which is the 23rd of June 2022. This date appears at the top left corner of the document. The contract number, as in all other documents, 43107789. The total sale amount for 114 metric tons of maize starch, which is 51,300 US dollars. Next, we have the related expenses from FOB value to CIF value. And under that, we have the beneficiary account information, including the bank account number, the location, and the SWIFT code. There is one thing that we need to pay attention to, which is the terms of payment. Here it says payment against documents, which is PAD. Let's have a quick look into it. This is a method of export payment where the exporting entity passes an instruction to the presenting bank to surrender cargo title documents to the importer only if full payment is made by the importer against the invoice value or bill of exchange. In other words, 
the importer can only take delivery of the cargo after making payment to the presenting bank. Next up, we have the information related to the exporter and the importer, including the exporter's information, name, address, phone number, and tax identification number, including the import and export code. We have also have the importer's information, the name, the address, the phone number, including the tax code, which is 10102058175. And lastly, we have the information related to the shipping of the merchandise. We have the number of the bill of lading, which is AMC1843102. The inco term under which the merchandise has been sold, which is the CIF inco term 2010. The name of vessel that will be carrying the goods, which is the OOCL Genoa, and also the final destination where the goods will be dispatched, which is the Haiphong port, and finally the shipper's signature. The last essential document that we're going to discuss is the packing list. A packing list itemizes the contents of each package, the box, the pallets, and etc. It includes weight, measurements, and detailed list of the goods in each packet. The packing list should be included in a carton or package that can be attached to the outside of a package with a copy inside. In this document, the invoice number and the date appears first, followed by the details of the exporter and the consignee, which is the importer, including the name of the firm, the location of the headquarter, and the tax code of the consignee. The following sections are the details of the shipment of goods. As we can see, the shipped good is maize starch, the packing detail, the destination of shipment, the quantities and marking details. The last table describes the stuffing of the goods inside the containers. The term FCL, which is full container load, indicates that the containers are stuffed at their maximum capacity. As listed in the table, the packages are stored in six containers, each with a specific code containing 760 packages and weighing a bit more than the net weight, which is 19,000 metric tons. At the bottom are the place and date when the list was issued and the signature of the exporting firm. Along with the essential documents which is established between the buyer and the seller, in this document set, we also provided some additional documents which relate the TTN, which is the importer, to its related bank, which is Vietcom Bank. So besides the compulsory documents available to us by TTN, here are some additional documents that were involved, not between the buyer and the exporter, but the buyer and its associated bank. And now we'll have a quick look through these papers. So the three papers that we are offered include the application for remittance, the letter of commitment, and the foreign currency buy and sell contract. All three documents were incurred between the buyer TTN and the associated bank, which is Vietcom Bank, regarding the transaction of money between the associated bank account of the buyer and the beneficiary bank of the exporter in India. The first document can be understood as the request of remittance, which includes all the information of the remitter as well as its bank account and the beneficiary, which is the exporter and its linked bank. Especially in this transaction, the remittance method is SWIFT, which stands for the name of the global member-owned cooperative and the world's leading provider of secure financial messaging services. Another remarkable information is in the charges, which would be shared by both sides, which means if incurred within the buyer's nation, the charge will be paid by the buyer and vice versa. The second document is attached to the application of remittance is regarded as a commitment of TTN, which is the importer to its associated bank, about the transaction with Gujarat Ambuja. This document shows the contract number and date first, then the goods description, the contract value, the information about invoice, the seller, the buyer, the beneficiary, and the payment value. At the end of the letter, there are some available commitments for TTN to take before giving the letter to the associated bank. Those commitments could be listed temporary import and re-export transaction, border gate transfer of goods, credit advice from the sale of re-exported goods, and etc. And finally, the representative signature. The third document is the foreign currency buy and sell contract, 
In this document, the associated bank will show the exchange rate between the two currency and the money that the buyer have to pay. The below information is the tick table related to the option that they may have made at the letter of commitment above. This includes the related transactions and their corresponding commitments. Lastly, there are some documents need to be presented right after the transaction has been completed, but in any case, not later than two to six months since the date of the commitment depends on the transaction type.